guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1971 Ford F-250. Up front is a 6.4 liter V8 and down below is a four speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be making this video because I love driving these older vehicles, but this one is just quite the handful. And so I definitely have my work cut out for me today. But if you'd like to submit your own vehicle and have it reviewed here on the channel, you can head on over to my website. Oh, come on. Not in the middle of my ad read, come on. There we go. You can head on over to my website, zachbridle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 390 under the hood. Well, that was an option back in the day, but this truck actually came with the 360 5.9 liter from the factory. At some point in its life, this truck received the larger engine, which really, the only difference between the 360 and the 390 was bore and stroke. So they're pretty much the same engine. Just a little bit more power. Oh, that's as fast as I'm comfortable doing that. <laughs> oh man. Everything in here is very rough and tumble, and we'll talk about that. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed manual transmission, Ugh, and it is very unforgiving. Not a very good listener. It's a very good talker, though, just not a smooth talker. And although it is a dogfight, it works. And when it's in gear, it's in gear. It doesn't leave anything on the table. You son of a bitch. Last but not least, this truck is four wheel drive and it actually has a very important four wheel drive system fitted to it. So this is known as a divorced four wheel drive system. And no, that doesn't mean that the front wheels only get to be seen by the transmission every other Saturday with supervision. What it means is that the transfer case and the transmission are two totally separate units. Modern four wheel drive systems incorporate the transfer case into the transmission. It's one whole thing. But back in the day, when Ford debuted their four wheel drive pickups back in 1959, this is how they did it. It's a regular standard two wheel drive transmission with a transfer case added to it. It's why it's called divorced because they're no longer together. And so because of this system, it takes up a lot more room under the truck. And that's why this truck is raised so much. Yes, it does have a lift kit, but if you look at the standard 1971 F-250 with four wheel drive, they all sat a lot higher. And so these trucks started to get the nickname of high boy because they did sit up higher than their two wheel drive counterparts. It was just so they could fit all the four wheel drive goodies under it. So I thought that was a really cool piece of Ford's history. And later on in the late seventies, they ended up switching to a married system. And that's what we still have today. How does it feel to drive the F-250? Um, terrifying, unsure. Everything in here is very heavy duty. Nothing in here is ready to forgive you for anything. It's not nice to drive, it's not nice to shift, it's not nice to be in, it's not nice to talk in, but this is what trucks were back in the day. And this specific truck was a farm truck and then a mud bog truck and then off the road for about 30 years. So while heated seats and adaptive cruise control are nice, None of that in a truck like this. This is when trucks were pieces of equipment and nothing more. So it's to be expected of its harsh running gear. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. Off to the left is my fuel and my alternator current. In the center is my speedometer and odometer. And off to the right, I have my temperature and oil pressure. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it. No cruise control, nothing like that. Very simple farm truck to be expected. And off to the left, we have our headlights, key and the washer back in the 60s and 70s and even back into the 50s Ford was putting the key off to the left like we more commonly associate with Porsche today moving out of the door we do have a little smokers window as well as a crank for the window but I do want to point out the door handles back in the 70s Ford used these little door handles that are built into the pockets of the door they now brought that back. I currently have a 2024 Ford Raptor R right now, and it has the exact same door handles on the inside. Very cool to see that heritage from Ford. Moving into the center, we do have an ashtray, aftermarket radio, and heat. 
which I am pleasantly enjoying the heat today. It's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit today. So the heat is most certainly nice. Then we have this really curvy shifter. Like I said, unforgiving and rude. And that's what you want in a truck like this. And down below that, we do have the four wheel drive for four high, four low, and of course, neutral. Moving up to the seats in the center console, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that these are not the original seats. They're from some late 80s, early 90s GM product. If you know what it is, please leave a comment. I think it's like a Tahoe Suburban, something like that. So these are not the original seats. No cup holders in here. So by default, the 71 F250 fails the big friggin' bottle test. All right, so we're on the back of the F250. Let's just enjoy a moment of silence, huh? Whole new meaning to the word hook'em. But I did want to show off something with the bed. Traditional pickup trucks nowadays, you pull it up and then you pull it down. This you actually pull out to the right. Very, very interesting. Once we are back here, uh, it's a farm truck. All right. One thing I do want to note um, is the fact that this light bar has now been in three different reviews. It's been on three different trucks that I've reviewed. So fun little uh, shooting cars lore for you. Now we gotta talk about the looks of the truck and I love the look of it. I love the look of the high boy. And this one has been through it. This truck has been driven hard and put away wet. And so you definitely see that, but I do like the styling of the early 70s. I, I really like the whole 70s and 80s F series pickups. I think they all look pretty cool. Very angular, very square body, and that is my design language of choice. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving this high boy F250? Well, the driving experience, like I said, has been slightly terrifying. I don't have any faith in the brakes. I don't have any faith in the clutch or throttle. The steering seems to be my only lord and savior at this moment, and even that is rather vague. But here's the thing. This is a great glimpse into the past of what trucks used to be. Before the oil crisis, which took place in 1973 and changed the automotive landscape, I have a whole video about it on my channel. I'll link at the end if you want to seek that out. Pre-oil crisis, trucks really could do whatever the heck they wanted. They didn't have to meet any emissions requirements and they were built to be on farms and take the farmer into town every once in a while. So that's why you see this truck doesn't have any creature comforts. And that's why modern trucks have so many. Because trucks have gotten so expensive, they have to be a one answer solution. But back in the day, you'd have this truck, you'd have a little Pinto, you'd go to take your kid to school in, whatever it was. Trucks weren't really the main mode of transportation. And this is the last generation of unrestricted trucks, where trucks could just be trucks. Because towards the late 70s, we started getting emissions laws, which affected the cars first. But in 1980, they came after the trucks. And all throughout the 80s, truck engines got smaller and smaller. They got less powerful. They were nerfed. They were neutered. And so this is a truck. This is a monolith from the pre-neutered era. This is not diluted. This is fully saturated. And that's why I love driving these older trucks. I love seeing that stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ted for letting me take out his F-250. I always love a glimpse into the past. Ted has been wonderful. We filmed probably half a dozen reviews together. He's wonderful to work with. I always look forward to filming with him and I hope to do so more in the future. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.